catastrophes in the world. There's catastrophes, earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, volcano eruptions. But then there's disasters that are involving transportation and some of them are horrific and spectacular. I'm here in the town of Kingsburg, California today to relay a happening that took place here on February 4th of 1946, a day that stunned and shocked California and the world. It happened right here. Let me tell you the story. Oh, by the way, let me just add, heroism, incredible heroism and bravery to the point that some people were, well, scarred and unable to pursue their professions. I want to give you some context because I want to hear your opinions because in my opinion, this is, this is just a horrific setup here that not only led to that tragedy, but I'll tell you some other tragedies too. This is Highway 99 running north and south up and down the middle of California's 400 mile Central Valley. Kingsburg is a center of commerce. It's known as Little Sweden here in the Central Valley. And you can see when you exit Highway 99, this is Sierra Avenue going into the town of Kingsburg. What I want you to note is the fact that Simpson here, this street is Simpson here, comes in at an oblique angle. It doesn't intersect perpendicular to Sierra Street. It comes in at an angle. And that is a real crux of how, how this horrific accident started. Let's make our way across the street here. The first principle in our story was a 21 year old truck driver who had just finished a three year hitch in the military and he took some of his skills and he became a truck driver here in the Central Valley running fuel between the town of Hanford and various points through the valley. This is the track that runs from Los Angeles up to Oakland, a very heavily trafficked route, not only for freight, but for passenger tra trains as well. And notice again how this meets at a very oblique angle here, meaning it's very sharp. It's not perfectly perpendicular uh, to the railroad tracks here. Anyway, as Mayor was driving up his truck on Highway 99 over here and exited the highway and turned onto Sierra Street. He approached this intersection right here, Simpson. And as he pulled through, there were several train cars sitting on this first set of tracks it blocked his vision to see what was coming up from the south, which was an afternoon, early evening train from Los Angeles. Again, he could not see because as he came up this road here, there were cars blocking on the track. Unbeknownst to him, the train was barrel along here. They told me if I came along here, I might see some of the remains of the horrific fire that took place on that February late afternoon, early evening of 1947. And sure enough, continues to exist here. The brakeman and the engineer, thinking everything was business as usual, did their usual slight slowdown when you're coming into a town. There's some controversy and dispute about whether the, what they call the wigwam arms came down and warned traffic about what was coming. But to their horror, 
the engineer and the brakeman, they could not believe what they were seeing on the line up here. Off to their left, moving across and through Sierra Avenue, they spotted a fuel truck carrying 7,200 gallons of gasoline and it was on a course for a perfect collision right here at Sierra and the railroad tracks. The train itself con consisted of nine cars, a dining car, and an observation car. And it had some enlisted men who were on the train and being post-war people were feeling good. Hey, why don't you move up to uh, first class and enjoy yourselves. Also, there were 14 members from a hockey team out of San Francisco called the San Francisco Shamrocks. And they were contemplating their game up in Fresno that was to take place that evening, about the 20 miles north of here. Their lives would be changed in a dramatic and horrifying way. The engineer immediately applied the brakes, but it was too late. With ter terrific force, the train slammed broadside, displacing the tanker on top of the truck bed and igniting it into a sea of fire with flames that, well, within seconds reached 100 feet high here. And from Highway 99, people were claimed to have said that they thought that the bowels of hell had opened up in Kingsburg. Shocked doesn't even begin to describe that late afternoon scene. Heroes, oh yes. Let me tell you about some of the heroes of that fateful day. After impact and observing flames over 100 feet high and 7,000 gallons of fuel spread out for a, a great distance here, creating literally a lake of fire, Porter J.C. Ellis on the train heroically jumped off the train and took it upon himself to start smashing windows and he helped over 20 passengers escape what would have been absolutely certain death. Perfect timing now with the approach of this freight train. And you can see if you're back here on this road and there's cars parked on this siding, you can't see this train barreling to gives me the willies and just makes me think oh how terrifically horrible that day was another hero was Clarence Long who worked at a gas station on this corner I think where the Chevron station is today you can just barely see it he was sitting writing a letter at work that night in his office heard the explosion came running out and saw the lake of fire advancing toward him. Risking his own life, he also came forward, ran to the side of the train, and also with bars and whatever he could find on the tracks, started smashing open windows and pulling passengers out from the inside. At this time, the engineer and the brakeman were dead. Amazingly, Mayor, the truck driver, was still alive, but additional people were to lose their lives over the next couple days. Roma Winery over here dispatched its own fire crew to come over and help suppress the fire. Also, the 17 members of the San Francisco Shamrocks hockey team heroically helped people from the burning wreckage and received burns so massive that many of them were forced to give up 
their sports careers. We're talking about real heroism right here on Route 99 and Sierra in the town of Kingsford. to think the poor design of this intersection with the fact that cars could be parked on the siding blocking view was a major contributor to that disaster on February 4th of uh, 1946 or 47. I forgot for the moment what it was. But you know that August 22nd of this year almost well the same exact thing happened but luckily for the town of Kingsburg it was a 18-wheeler uh, or semi loaded with goods that moved across the track here and was plowed into by an oncoming train, killing and totally decimating the uh, truck. Poor design? I think it is. And uh, hopefully in the future, Kingsburg won't have to suffer another disaster like they did with those two. Well, I'm gonna close it out and hope that uh, you uh, got some benefit from watching this video. Please like and share. I'd like to bring unique moments of history to life in my travels. What I call unique travel. Travel out of the ordinary. And I hope that you will subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. Learn a little bit of history along the way. History told in a way, not like a boring classroom, but in real life field trips. From Kingsburg, California, in the heart of California's Central Valley. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up or appreciated. And by the way, if you enjoyed the story, please share it out on your social media. Thanks everybody.